this is part two of a series of lecture lectures on digital VLSI circuits right in the part one we discussed about low power digital VLSI techniques uh, in which we discussed about the various uh, sources of power dissipation in CMOS circuits in part two uh, we are going to characterize and CMOS inverter uh, using TSMC 180 nanometer technology files using LT spice software right uh, the first and foremost uh, uh, thing to do is to install CMOS spice model in LT spice okay you can go to this link and download these three files okay once you have downloaded these three files you got to paste TSMC 081.lib file in the address which is given here in program files LTC LT spice lib down, uh, slash sub and you got to paste these two files in uh, lib stroke uh, sim folders so once you have done this you got to open you the first and foremost you got to do this you got to download these three uh, uh, files from my web page and then you got to paste this as as given here then open a new lt spice schematic okay on the uh, top right you will find a spice directive uh, uh, button small button tap so you got to press that once you have pressed that uh, this window opens up you got to type dot include tsmc 018.lib right this is the spice directive wherein you are asking the spice lt spice to include this library once you have done with that you press ok then you are ready to go then you can use the this component menu and you will be able to see cmos n and cmos p added as small instances okay so you can invoke those instances and set the required w by l so you can subscribe to this youtube channel and you can you know, keep yourself um, updated with the new lectures which i am posting out here okay now we'll go to lt spice and do this inverter characterization demonstration i'll show you how to characterize the inverter using lt spice now i opened up an lt spice i am going to open a uh, new schematic i have opened a new schematic i am going to the spice directive right i am going to type include tsmc library make sure that you have ticked not the comment but the spice directive now this should be enabled once you have done you press ok and you can paste it out here okay now if i go to the component menu okay i'll see cmos n which is available here so let me take that cmos n right and i can go to the component menu i will find cmos p is also available so let me select cmos p so this is how i'm able to get cmos n and cmos p so let me first set the length okay it is 180 nano right and the minimum width for a 180 nano will be 400 nano so let me set those specs for here let me put 180 nano and p as we know we generally take two times the width of n so i am putting 800 nano so let me join this with wires let me join this with wires right let me put a small wire here let me take a ground pin and put it here let me ground the substrate out here right let me put a vdd out here escape let me connect the uh, body of this pmos also to vdd right now i'm going to pick up uh, vdd let me go to uh, voltage okay uh, okay let me put one voltage there source one voltage source here right let me connect this voltage source to the input let me pick up a few grounds let me put it here let me put one ground here this is uh, v1 let me connect then capacitor here as a load okay this is equivalent to the uh, gate capacitance of the next stage so let me put uh, 
say approximately four fan out so which uh, you can calculate that so it will come close to few femtofarads so let me put it as 50 femto so now for ease let me label this net label this net as v in okay so i am going to label this as v in and i am going to label this as v out okay so i'm going to label this as v out right this i'm going to set it as 1.8 which is the standard voltage for 180 nanometer let me do first a dc analysis transfer characteristics so let me put this as a variable right let me put this as a variable this okay now let me pick up a simulation like i'm going to do a dc sweep input source is v2 so input source is v2 start value is 0 stop value is 1.8 okay all right i'm going to put that and let me run this right so i got a window here now i am going to plot uh, v in right and i am going to plot v out okay and let me also plot the current which is going into the inverter okay so let me maximize this for you so this is what so okay v in this is the inverter transfer characteristics this is the current right so uh, now uh, what i do is right click put a cursor okay now let me take the cursor to the leftmost position right at zero so what is it 18.86 pico ampere so that is known as the static leakage current so this leakage current is because of n n, n mos because p mos is supposed to be on here n mos is supposed to be off but still the leakage current as i explained in my previous lecture part one so that is the leakage because of n mos now if i get this cursor to uh, this end it is 4.3 pico okay so this leakage current is because of pmos in this condition pmos is supposed to be off but then there is some leakage it is in the pico current okay this is going to be the max short circuit current right i am calling it as max short circuit current because in actual practice it, it will be much lesser than that because the capacitances will come into picture and it, it, uh, it, there will be switching currents but not short circuit currents okay so this is going to be and if you uh, take the area under this this will be the area under this red curve which will be the max uh, short circuit power okay these are going to the max uh, values but uh, this may, will not the actual thing will be lesser than this right it will be more component will be contributed by the switching losses and not by the short circuit losses unless you, you don't connect any load then this will be a major component if you connect the load then this will not be a major component okay okay once we have done with the dc analysis let's uh, do a transient analysis and see so i select a pulse okay this is initial voltage is zero final voltage the second voltage is going to be 1.8 volt delay let me put a delay of 2.5 nano okay rise time is 10 pico fall time is 10 pico on time is going to be 5 nano period is going to be 10 nano okay and 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 this uh, transient i'm going to center it as not 20 nano okay so let me run this and let me plot v in and let me plot v out okay so uh, this is what uh, we are getting it v in let me also plot the current which is going into this this is the current which is going into the circuit okay now let me uh, okay uh, current will plot it again let, let let's first uh, see what are the delays so to, to find out the delays okay you got to put it marker at 0.9 and find out okay so this is the 
propagation delay when it is going from high to low and this is the propagation delay which is when the signal is going from low to high so you got to put a marker and you find out okay okay what is this time so you you got to put two markers out here right so you right click you go to first okay this is the marker okay this for the green line right so uh, if you see and uh, since it is given a 10 pico so around not uh, at 2.5 right 2.5 nano some at 2.5 nanoseconds this, this is too steep uh, to capture that data so we go here we put a marker here okay so see, see this marker you got to put it at 1.8 volt so you got to put it at 0.9 right so in lt space you'll not be able to put it precisely there but you can slowly adjust it and try to put as close as to uh, as to 0.9 okay so, so see, this is jumping you can use the uh, arrow keys uh, to uh, adjust it also so this is around close to 0.9 volt right point and this is v reference 0.9 so it is at 2.6 uh, nanoseconds right so we the whereas the input signal letters is at 2.1 nanosecond so this is 2.678 whereas the input at 50 percent what will it, it is it is around uh, 2.5 nanoseconds and we have given a, a rise time of 10 uh, picoseconds so it will be exactly if i say it will be 2.005 so if i uh, take the difference between 2.005 and 2.678 then i will get it as you know, 175 so 175 is the propagation delay similarly you can put markers out here markers out here and you can accordingly find out what are the delays in this the in case you can characterize the delays okay, uh, to compute the power i will plot the current in this uh, branch okay let me plot the current I go here this is the current so if I press the control and then click on the name of I'll get average so this is the average of the current so if you multiply the average of the current with VDD you will get the total power which is consumed by this circuit okay other option available to compute the power of this inverter so once we have run you press alt and you click on PMOS so this is a PMOS M2 right again alt press so this is the instantaneous power of the NMOS or we also take the instantaneous power of the source okay so once you press alt you will see this uh, uh, thermometer kind of thing coming okay that is meant for, that is that will be a measurement of the instantaneous power of okay so this is the instantaneous power total power which is being consumed so let me maximize this window add one more pane okay where is or let me take this out here right so now control uh, m2 is pmos so let me press uh, control and then click on this so average power is 8.6 microwatt so 8.6 microwatt is the power which is consumed in pmos average power right okay similarly if i press control I will get 8.6 microwatt, which is the power consumed in the NMOS. Now, if I press Control out here, this is minus 16. It's showing minus 16 because that much power. This is uh, this power is not consumed here, but it is supplying that much of power. So that's why it's it's negative, right? So 16.8 microwatt of power is being you know, provided by this source. Okay. So this is 16, this is 8, and this is 8. Okay. So this I explained to you in my uh, previous lecture how, on how these figures come from, right? Each time this capacitor is charged, this node is charged to one, this is going to supply current. So half VDD square CL, uh, that much of energy is dissipated as heat in the PMOS and half VDD square CL energy gets stored in the capacitor. Similarly, when this input signal goes high, that half VDD square CL, okay, that much energy 
which is stored in the capacitor gets dissipated as heat in the NMOS. So when this node is being charged from 0 to 1, like when the input is going from high to low, this is going from 0 to 1, 18 microwatts of power is taken from this source, out of which, right, uh, 16 microwatts is taken from here, out of which 8 gets dissipated as heat here and 8 microwatt power, power equivalent to that much energy is stored in this capacitor. And when this signal is going from low to high, this whatever is charged, uh, charged stored in this capacitor that is, uh, gets dissipated out here. So the average power which is getting dissipated in NMOS is around 8. So right. So during charging, a, during this node going from 0 to 5, 8 microwatt here and 8 here. So 16 is being drawn from here. While discharging, there is no power which is taken from this source. But whatever is stored here is getting discharged through NMOS. So that's how we have characterized the, uh, the inverter. We have taken, uh, I have demonstrated you how to compute the delays and power. So that's all for today. Thanks a lot.